Hey everyone, welcome to another Meraki Monday. Me and Dan here talking about Meraki, obviously, because it's Monday. So Dan, what do you got for us today? Well, I uh, came across an interesting conversation with one of uh, our colleagues here that was looking for release notes on a piece of firmware for a Meraki MX firewall and was having some challenges finding that information on the web. Uh, so I figured that might be a topic that might have uh, driving some, driven some people mad when looking for that information that you uh, were looking for from Meraki that um, you may not have good search results as you would be looking from a, maybe a Cisco standpoint, like more of their enterprise products. Cisco mm -hmm. has release notes and all that very well published on the web. However, we're going to kind of dig into how Meraki uh, presents their documentation in a, a slightly different fashion. How does okay. that sound, Bobby? Sounds good. Yeah. So it's kind of a double edged sword. So some, you know, we've been talking about Meraki and the simplicity of everything. Right. And, and you might have kids that kind of deal with this too. Right. They, they know everything from the technology level till something goes wrong and then they have no idea what to do. Right. So because this stuff might be so simple, uh, when they do need help on something, when there's something that kind of goes one tier down, um, it might not be as easy as everything else is on the dashboard to be able to get assistance on. Yeah, and I think dashboard is kind of the, the key conversation here because uh, what Meraki does for specific release note information tied to their firmware updates on your uh, product portfolios, that information is only found from the dashboard. So you must have organizational access to your or on your account for your dashboard to get access to see your firmware upgrades. And that's important because if you're going to look to do a firmware upgrade, you're probably doing it for a certain reason. And Meraki has that level of information on the versioning and what has come out and soon to be coming out with different versions out there uh, that you can find from the release notes labeled here as soon as you click into the firmware updates home screen. Okay, so Dan, can you can you clarify that? Because um, yeah. you know sometimes, and I think maybe in a, even in a different video, we talked about some of the different admin roles. Um, so what you're talking about is if someone has, let's say, monitor only access. So if you've given like an end user, uh, would someone with read only access be able to to see this page, the organization page with the firmware updates, or is that still still blocked for them? That's a great question. Um, so it really depends on how you set up that user. So if we want to take a stroll down that real quick, uh, we can go to the organizational view. I have that accessibility and it's really all about how you've given that role a privilege. And you can see from our privilege listings here that some people have organizational view, which will give them that organizational uh, menu bar down here to do the firmware upgrades. Some associates might only have access to a specific network. And if you only have network level access, you would not have the availability to see the organizational wide view. So a lot of times you would put your read only access, monitor only access at the network level because that's what you want them to have access into. And that would just um, more so cripple their ability to make any changes by being in one of those respective modes. But until you get the green organizational uh, checkbox kind of here, you kind of, you know, seeing it on the screen that you have organizational mm -hmm. access, that's how you can tell that the specific user does or does not have access to see this section of the dashboard. Great can question. you click on just add admin real quick and we can just show what that yeah, looks like? Yeah, let's take a look at that. Is, uh, so if you want to take a, a new one, you know, we can type in, you know, test user and we can do test at test.com and, you know, you kind of walk through and then one of the, you know, first selections on the list here is organizational access. Uh, by default, it's set to none. You can set it to read only or set it to full. And you have that first thing you can do when setting up that new account right there. So if you want them to have full access to modify, you can do that here. If you want to have access to read only and kind of see what's going on in the organizational view, um, which might be good for certain summary reports or certain things you can take at a glance, uh, you have that accessibility or obviously take them out of the mix whatsoever. So if we want to do firmer updates and have that person make the changes, you do want to give them full organizational access and that will give them every uh, specific network that they can uh, then go and maintain from there. Okay, so all the different branches, everything would basically be covered under there. 
But exactly. if we were doing a, a managed service where we were a partner that was managing the network for somebody else, chances are we would probably want to give them maybe either read-only access or no organization access at all, and maybe even give it to, you know, kind of uh, targeted access to each network's maybe, you know, junior IT admin at that branch location or whatever. Exactly correct, right. So you want to be very much in control of what they are and are not able to go and see. And in a lot of cases, you know, mentioning the MSPs, uh, you're exactly right, where you may not give them at all the organizational access, even visibility to it, because that's something that the provider that's managing that service is going to be the one to uh, fully control and have access to. And then you're going to you know, block them from that opportunity, but then give them the specific role they do want for their target networks or other networks that they may have accessibility. And then you can get granular from there if you even give them network access to just read only or monitor or guest. Uh, or again, full if you want to have modify rights uh, at the network level as well. So. Okay. Pretty much a uh, controllable environment for that role-based access as you do create those different administrators uh, across your design. Got it. Okay, so now that we have a little bit of a background of kind of what that, that administration uh, side looks like, uh, let's take a look uh, back at the firmware upgrades that you were talking about. Yeah, so since I am an organizational admin, I do have that accessibility. And this is the piece that Meraki has added to the dashboard. That was the question from uh, one of our uh, other engineers was looking for this information down here, the latest firmware versions. And we can select uh, three different styles of firmware that might be available for the respective products. There's the stable versions that are out right now, which are the most complete tested and usable for a working environment. We have release candidates, which means they're getting ready to roll out to a publicly consumed uh, market, but you know they're pretty much ready to go uh, out of beta stage, very much tested, uh, but just kind of getting the, the last rough edges smoothed out before they hit the general stable release. And then if you're adventurous or you have a lab or you really want to turn on that uh, latest feature that might have just been announced uh, by Meraki to try something out, uh, you can hit the beta version and you can get uh, the different firmwares that might be respective to those uh, versions as you kind of uh, click through the table here. And you'll notice not every device is going to have a, a beta or release candidate available to it. So you just be of aware of kind of where you are in this navigation journey. But either way, as you're kind of picking out which one might be the most accessible, you know, stable beta or uh, release candidate, you can click on these release notes and kind of go through the, the different versioning that has happened both pre, current, and future, depending on where you are in your journey. So an example here, we'll take a look at the MX because it's the first on the, uh, the left-hand side. We'll click on release notes. And in doing so, you'll notice that it doesn't take us to a website doesn't take us to a separate hot link. It doesn't take us anywhere, but just gives us an overlay in our dashboard. This was the concern that our other technician had was that, hey, I, I can't access this information anywhere else. Like, where is this publicized? And unfortunately, to his point of view, uh, not having access to a Meraki dashboard at that current moment, um, was not able to see this granular level of data that's only found from this uh, dashboard view. So that's one thing to kind of start this conversation while we thought it was a good topic for today, because there might be features in here that might be uh, specific to helping you evolve your uh, product portfolio, mainly on the highlights that are coming out, you know, what's new in this release, any notices of what's gonna happen if you do put this into production? Is there something that's gonna have an impact to uh, legacy products, current products, their, their rollback issues, uh, different things will be part of the notice structure. Important bug fixes. And then the one that's probably the most relevant for a lot of IT staffs is known issues. Um, while a lot of bug fixes have corrected issues in the past, not every firmware is going to have a, uh, you know, everything be corrected. So you'll still find, you know, known issues that have been identified by the, you know, community, by Meraki engineers, and they're making this very apparent here in the uh, scrollable view of what you have across, of what you're gaining, things that might be of concern, 
And if they are of concern, you know, maybe you want to take a look at a future version, which you can highlight uh, down here in the bottom of this little pop out window, or even see what was done in previous versions. So, from a navigation standpoint, you, you kind of have to just click forward. There's not really like a, a nested table version of this or in, uh, another way to kind of uh, move through these screens. But if you click next version, we'll see we go to uh, the versioning changes up here, 14.4.3, and you'll see different things change when you click on the different versions, right? You'll see more bug fixes in this version than others, which probably means that this one's going to be the next stable release candidate. It's getting ready for public release and probably the one that's gonna be the one coming to a dashboard near you because of everything they've fixed on this version and even some notices that you might take advantage of with different things in this one, like AMP and threat grid integrations. It also starts, you know, moving to the next generation, right? We were on previously 15.x release. Now we're moving to a 16.x release and we can start seeing things that are coming in the next versioning, what it's doing. You kind of get the idea of you kind of click through up to the last version, which is now 16.9 is the last version um, currently available to move your devices to in this change log journey. Well, thanks for that, Dan. So this is basically everyone who does have access to the dashboard. Uh, what about those who don't have any access to the dashboard at all? Where can they go? Yeah, that's a good point. Um, so we kind of mentioned that how Cisco uh, traditional products, you have that nice release note page and you can go there as a web-based option. But if you don't have access to a dashboard and are looking for that level of kind of well, what's new, where's that feature? Uh, there's two places that I recommend you would start that conversation. Uh, the first would be documentation.meraki.com that page would take you to well here and this would give you information as to um, what you can do with the product as if you had it right so taking things from general administration or if we even look at the uh, mx platform that we used as our example in the firmware updates this will walk you through the uh, conversation of okay i want this product to do that thing and then within the information of these documents, it will lead you to say, okay, you must have this firmware version to do this thing. So using the documentation.meraki.com would be more of a, a guided tour or an outcomes-based conversation, and then kind of backs you into the firmware that would be necessary to do that thing. So that's kind of how a conversation would shape down that direction. If you want to be a little bit more specific into, okay, what new features have launched that I can talk to my customers about, I would go to community.meraki.com. You'll end up with a page that looks like this. And then front and center on this page, you'd have a section called, well, new features. And if you click on that, this is um, the place where Meraki will post the community, or sometimes the community may pop out and say, hey, this new feature has existed come take a look at it, right? So one of the things that you can see is that based on evidence here, two weeks ago from this date, um, we can see that this new piece of information was loaded. We can read more information about it and we'll even give you details of steps on how to go about loading that particular feature or any more information about uh, a knowledge-based article or something from the documentation.meraki.com page. So it's kind of a lot of the resources working together but community, great pace in general to find information um, from Meraki about any topic, but specifically new features, new things that have come out, things that Meraki or the community themselves have wanted to share that might be available to your platform, uh, you'll find here. And then if you wanna make good on that or dig deeper into some of that information, again, you can read more about uh, that here. We did a video specifically on some of these uh, MT details that have updated in the dashboard and you can scroll through and then again click on the documentation be taken to the documentation.meraki.com and then read the specific uh, detailed notes about how to make that solution come to life so that's how i would approach it if you don't have specific access to a dashboard and those firmware release notes all right good stuff there hopefully this was informative again kind of a quick one uh, we went a little bit over the firmware changes where you can find some information on that as well as a little bit of the kind of administrator's view and kind of how to choose some of those 
different options that are presented to you for that. Hopefully, again, this was helpful. And uh, Dan and I will see you next week with another Meraki Monday. Thanks very much.